What's up, Terrifics? I'm Michael Artsis. Thanks so much for joining us. This is the Michael Artsis Show. You're watching Be Terrific at Be Terrific on all social media. The new time of the show, 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time, daily, Monday through Friday. I am so excited. At Be Terrific TV on all social media. And don't forget to reach out for our Slack chat. Connect at BeTerrific.com. Send us an email, your feedback. We love it. We love to have it come all the time. We love your feedback. So give us your feedback and ask to join our Slack chat. Us, you, and the rest of the Terrifics 24-hour real-time conversation. I want to say hello to Jenny, who's watching in Finland, of course. Digital Phil, who's in Texas. You guys are awesome. CJ, what's up? Hey, JC, how's it going? Hope you're smiling and having a great day. You guys are all unbelievable. You are the Terrifics. There are many more of you. You're all unbelievable. You make Be Terrific special. Thanks so much for watching. I've got a very special guest today. Before I get to him, I want to uh, welcome Kevin to the program. Kevin, say hello to everybody. No camera on Kevin today. The Kevin cam is uh, down for our guest via Skype. So, Kevin, what's going on? You have a good weekend, buddy? Holding down the controls in the other room? Uh, Kevin... Apparently, Kevin forgot how to work the controls over the weekend, that's all. Oh, well. I guess we can't hear from Kevin. Maybe he forgot to hit L LR okay. on his microphone. You there, Kevin? I'm here, guys. I'm here. <laughs> What's going on, buddy? You know, it's funny. We have no camera on you today, and you're dressed up nice. You're wearing a Burberry sweater. I love it. Yeah, you know, I came dressed for the occasion. Yeah, you did. I I'm going to give everybody the picture. I'm going to paint the picture. You're wearing a black Burberry sweater with uh it's just straight black with epitaphs that are the burberry you know woven thing what do you what do you call that what is that even called you know what our guest probably knows i'll, I'll ask him yeah you should ask him that what you know about burberry yeah where'd right? you get where'd you get this sweater from burberry or you go like to the outlet stores i actually or was at the outlet stores i that's went good. to uh where was it exactly probably it woodbury outlet, commons woodbury commons that's yeah. exactly it and that's a good spot it. in new york and it, you don't want to go on sunday because it's packed but on saturdays you get sneak in there and they've got the Burberry store there. And here's the thing, Kevin. I was getting nervous for a second that maybe we were paying you too much, but clearly not. This is good. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> our, our first guest, our only guest today, a good friend of mine, played six seasons in the NFL, both for the Denver Broncos and, of course, for the Indianapolis Colts, winning the Super Bowl with the Colts. He's the only defensive player to ever line up in Peyton Manning's backfield and protect Peyton, also block the way for running backs. I hoped he was going to catch a pass or uh, run the ball in himself, but he didn't. But short yardage situations, and I can now say he's the only because Peyton Manning no longer plays football. This gentleman also is a golden gopher, a great person, and has the Foots Foundation as well as a lot of other business interests. I'd like to welcome my good friend Daryl Reed to the program. What's up, D? What's How are you? On? What's going on, Terrifics? What's going on out there? So uh, you have what John Madden described as the hardest hit ever in the NFL. Uh, you did that on Henry from the Titans back in like 2006 on a kickoff. You slipped uh, the double team and had like a 30-yard run at him. The clip is on YouTube, so everybody should uh, YouTube it now. And all you have to do is uh, type in Daryl Reed Big Hit and you'll find it. Now, here's the thing, D. Uh, today, and a lot of the comments say that this would have been a legal hit today, but back then it was a perfectly normal, good hit. That's how you were taught to tackle, and it is mind-numbing. When you watch it back, does it still kind of you know, rattle you? You know, I have I have those days where it does rattle me, and you know, looking back on it, or um, you know, when if if somebody shows it to me or I show it to someone else, or I, you know, sometimes I'm like, man, that was uh, you know, such a, a a lucky I would say lucky, but you know, the timing was just just perfect on that play. Yeah, it was perfect, uh, and and. That, I mean, that's what you were known for. You were a special team specialist, defensive end, and linebacker. You had some great sacks. You had some great tackles. But the, you had two kickoff plays that were amongst your best. You had one against the Eagles as well, just like that. And I don't think, you know, you said it's luck. I don't think it's luck. It's, uh, it's your preparation for the game, wouldn't you say? Yeah, no, definitely, definitely preparation did a, a, a huge part as, you know, those who, who were um, – fortunate enough to watch me play. I wasn't the fastest player on the field. So I really had to watch a lot of film and study uh, other teams, kickoff returns, punt returns to, to be able to make, make the plays that I was able to make. 
What goes into that? How much studying are you doing? So like, you know, the regular week you're doing a, a walkthrough, you're doing practice, you're, you're watching film. Are you going home and watching film? I, I think when you were playing it was probably on DVD, maybe at the end iPads. Now it's pretty much all iPads, but are you actually doing it? Are the guys watching by themselves or they stay in the film room? Yeah, no, um, you know, I, because I wasn't like a, a, a starter on defense and, you know, I was a situational defensive player, um, the, the guys who, you know, were, were regular defensive players or regular offensive players, um, you know, they were studying a lot of film at home in at the facility, but uh, I did a lot of my more studying at home, um, on the plane, things like that, you know, on, on the laptop back then, but you know, everybody's on iPads now. Would you ever, uh, you know, see something in the in in the other team's offense and take it to one of the coaches and say, "Hey, I think I can make a move like this," or you kind of just did that on the field uh, from what you noticed? You know, it just it just depended on the coach and how how um, open minded they were to you telling them, you know, to make some changes to the game plan or, um, you know, and it depends. I, I guess as I got older and um, more experienced and and my opinion was more respected you know, the more open-minded that the coaches would be to uh, whatever whatever I felt like I saw out there, whatever changes I suggested. Well, I, I think that you had a, an amazing career. You're an awesome player. You had a lot of fun playing, and, and I know that. I, I got to watch you play firsthand. It was a lot of fun watching you play. But I really think, you, you, you know, people don't realize how hard you really worked off the field to study, to watch the film, and then, of course, on the field to practice. Because, as you mentioned, you, you weren't a starter. And not only are you trying to become a starter, but you're also trying to make sure the guy who's number three doesn't take your job and become number two. And I think that even if you were a starter, you, people don't realize the preparation that goes into it. You're constantly watching the film. You're constantly looking for things. But there's also instinct on the field, right? I mean, when you have all that stuff in your head, you kind of let your mind, your eyes take over and, and react, don't you? Yeah, I mean, that that's... The, the preparation just allows you to to be able to play without hesitation. Um, you know what what comes to mind is a guy like like Ray Lewis, how how long his career was and how how high of a level he played at for the majority of his career. And it was because of his preparation. And it just allowed him to take his natural abilities and natural talents and um, natural feel for the game and just believe in himself 100 percent and not hesitate. And so he knew from watching film if certain motions happened or um, certain um, lineups or certain looks or formations, he knew what plays teams would be running or he had an idea of what play they might be running and he just didn't, didn't hesitate on his idea. Um, and, that, and that's what preparation does for you. It allows you to, to play at full speed without hesitation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and, I, and I think that you, let, you really let your, your eyes and your mind kind of do the work, but it's all based on the preparation and the muscle memory. People don't realize your walkthroughs, your practices are really all about muscle memory. I step here, I step there, I step there, I, I, you know, or I run, and, and, it, and letting your eyes and your mind kind of take over. Isn't, isn't that the way, you know, kind of works? Yeah, you just want everything to be as automatic as possible. Right. I remember when I first got to Indianapolis and, and watching, you know, Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison, you know, one of the greatest quarterback wide receiver duos to ever do it, watching them in practice. If they missed any pass in practice, if it was an out route, a comeback, a fade, if they missed anything in practice, they would do that same route over and over and over and over again um, after practice um, until they perfected it. And, and then when it came to the game, it was second nature to them. So any – any big plays that you see them make um, that, that people saw them make in the game, they had done it a, a thousand times in practice and, and, and perfected it already. And, and, and a, I mean, a thousand times, is that literal? Or, you know, people think they stay after practice, they throw a hundred balls. Is it, is it a hundred balls a day for 500 for the week? Or is it a thousand balls a day? I mean, what, what is, is it like that? I, for, for them, for them, it was, it, it was kind of a, um, a, a perfect scenario for the both of them because they're both very competitive people and they both want to be great. And so um, it allowed it allowed them to to really push each other um, and, and really um, really proved how how great of work ethic they both had. So with them, 
it was it was literally thousands. I mean, I, I can't imagine how many it was over their career. Sure, uh, but but obviously it probably was close to a thousand a week times however many years uh, t- times twenty weeks in a season plus playoffs. I mean, it's really twenty weeks with the preseason and everything, and and so you're talking. I mean. That's that's a lot. It's twenty. It's twenty thousand plus a season. Might be twenty five thousand plus a season, or thirty thousand uh, a season. At times, uh, I don't know. They played together like twelve years, I think, maybe longer. Uh, I don't have it at my fingertips. Uh, so J C from New Jersey wanted to know who your favorite teammate to play with was. My favorite teammate. Oh man, that's that's tough. Um, you know, I got I got my boys. I got my 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 friends that I that I played with that I'm people that I'm closer with or teammates that I'm closer with, like, um, you know, a Raheem Brock or a Dwight Franey or Elvis Doomerville, um, Wesley Woodyard. Um, it, it's hard to say who my favorite uh, teammate was. That's that's a great question. Um, How about to play what, with? Not necessarily like who you had the most fun with or who you stay in touch with, um, but who, who was the best teammate to play with maybe because you learned the most from them or just – enjoyed playing side by side or you worked so well together i know you and elvis doomerville had that great run in denver and and you were really you had a career year he had a career year and you were really acting as a foil for him and he he ran up uh, all those sacks yeah yeah no that was a that was a great time in, in denver you know sack city shout out to everybody from sack city my man uh uh chris baker in, in washington dc now living on the sack city tradition um, Doomerville out in Baltimore and um, they, no that was that was definitely a great time and and, and I mean playing with Freeney and Mathis in Indianapolis, Indianapolis was unbelievable and 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 just being able to steal so many different moves and techniques and um, from them that that was that was a you know who was really special to play with it was um, Brian Dawkins yeah Dawkins was a was a very very special unique player I mean he he was such a smart and and you talk about instinctive. He was such an instinctive player. He he made so many instinctive plays, like, um, you know, just based on his experience and just being a very smart player. Do you um, do you learn a lot asking him questions or from just watching him play? Yeah, you know what? Some of the things and <laughs> it's funny you ask that because some of the things that some of the great players can do aren't you know average they're they're not something that you know everybody can do you know it's like it's like you know can players can other players spin like freeney could spin no like can can other players like see the see the field and and change the plays like peyton did it's probably not going to really happen ever again like that so players are very unique especially the great ones it's like marvin like nobody could run quite like Marvin did. He had like an unorthodox style of running, which made his cuts out of his breaks very different from any other player before or after him. I say this so. to Kevin all the time. We throw a football here after the show almost daily. And I tell Kevin all the time that it's really like there are players in every sport. You talk about the Peyton Mannings, the Michael Jordans, the Wayne Gretzky. So hard for them to coach because they're not they see the world differently. It's not that they don't know how they did it. You can't possibly do what they did, and they don't understand that because to them, this is how you do it. And they exactly. have that vision, and they don't understand that you don't have that vision. Exactly, exactly. I mean, they talk about, you know, Jordan and how he used to, you know, just be practicing, you know, first guy in, last guy out, practicing as hard as he plays. They say the same thing about Jerry Rice. You know, I can speak for, for Peyton and Marv. The same thing. They they really practice hard. Peyton hated sitting out of practice. He hated it. He hated giving the backups reps, and he wanted to take every play. And and, and I think that's what really sep- one of the things that separates good from great. You enjoyed hanging out with Peyton too, didn't you? Uh, he, he's a good time. He's you know Peyton Peyton the storyteller. He's got he's got now he's got a million stories to tell. Oh, There's I no bet. Doubt. And he's got a great memory. You want to give us one? You want to give us one Peyton Manning story? One Peyton Manning story that he would tell or that I would tell? Um, <laughs> give me, you know what, now give me two. I'd like I, one of each. <laughs> I'm going to speak from my perspective. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, was, it was one night. It was, uh, we, were in, we were in Indianapolis, 
And I, I think it might have been we, we had like a little celebration or it might have been when camp ended or it was something going on. Um, and we were all we had all went to St. Elmo's, you know, famous steakhouse yeah. in Indianapolis. And um, it, it was a bunch of guys. But then it just ended up. It was me, Peyton and Reggie Wayne. OK. And I don't know how it ended up. We were the last three standing. But, you know, I have a pretty Peyton, good idea how you were the last three standing. But. <laughs> Peyton, Peyton, uh, Peyton's like, let's go. Let's go to another spot. We're going to do karaoke. And uh, we're like, what? Like, Peyton, you're going to do karaoke? <laughs> so we go to this, uh, you know, local bar. And um, actually, Peyton's the only one who actually did karaoke that night. You let him do it alone? Listen, this was his spot, his idea. Let him do his thing, all right? You know? Wait a um, second. Hold on. What, what are the people's reactions when you, Reggie Wayne, and the unbelievable Peyton Manning walk in? Well... I think this is, uh, it must have been a place where Peyton went on a regular basis because, you know, they didn't, they didn't, it wasn't too special to them. They were like, oh, it's Peyton's back, you know? Yeah, like, they were more excited so, to see Reggie Wayne. You know, it's Peyton's place. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he did some Johnny Cash songs and, um, yeah, we had, a, we had a good time that night. Now you know where the commercials come from. Is, is he, uh, was he good? Can he sing? Seriously, he can't sing, can he? He's like me. He, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I don't think, you know, I mean, he's a great quarterback, you know? <laughs> All right, so what's a story he would tell? A story he would tell. I, you know what? I can't tell his stories for him. You know, oh, he, you're killing I me. I can't tell those stories. I can't. I'm sorry. I don't, I'll I tell, tell you a Peyton Manning story I love. Your, your mom and I come to a game in, in Indy. I think it was the opening game of the new stadium. And your, your mother had never really spent time with Peyton. And we're waiting for you after the game. And you had just greeted us. And Peyton w walks up and you introduce Peyton to your mother. And I have a picture of, uh, you know, you guys laughing that I took. And, and, and Peyton telling stories to your mother and to me. But really, like, the, I mean, it was cool to see Peyton. But for your mother, it was like, it, it honestly was like she had seen the greatest athlete ever and it was amazing, and he had such nice things to say about you, and to see him tell your mother what a great, you know, guy you are was just, I mean, that, would, to me, was like the, the best thing ever. That was the most behind-the-scenes, most intimate moment you could ever have in, in my shoes, right? Like, we've hung right. out, we've gone to all sorts of events, we've done all sorts of fun things together with teammates, with just us, with all sorts of stuff, all sorts of parties, but to me, this was like the most intimate moment ever to be able to see this unbelievable Peyton Manning talking to your mother and your mother just like melting you know yeah no no and and Peyton was good at that Peyton was um he really understood his role as the team leader and he, he really played it to a T I mean I remember my first one of my first days ever in Indianapolis you know we're working out it's it's, it's the off season and we're working out in the weight room and it, it must have been my first week there and Peyton comes up to me and he goes Hey man, good to have you here. Wow. And I don't even know if I'm going to make the team at that point. <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, good to have me here. Are you kidding me? I'm like, I'm thrilled to be here. But that's, that's what was his way of really understanding and um, really taking on that role as a team leader, like to a T. Now you're a Minnesota Golden Gopher. You go undrafted. So you're an undrafted free agent. You to set the perspective for people, you really don't know if you're going to be practice squad, if you're going to make the team, if you're going to stick around, you might go play in the CFL, the AFL. You might not even be in football. You might be working in Jersey selling cars next week. And this guy comes up to you. That's unbelievable. And I'm sure it gave you a lot of confidence. Now, when he finally said to you, I want you in my backfield on short yardage, what was that like for you? You know what? That was um, it was special. It was it was unique and um, it was it was a surprise to me. You know, they I think they were just trying different guys out. You know, at, at fullback, they didn't um, the way the Indianapolis Colts did it was that they carried an extra kicker um, and an extra quarterback. They didn't want to carry an extra fullback on the team, so they used to you know have defensive linemen or offensive linemen. Um, you know fill that role of a fullback. So I, w I was fortunate enough to to fill that role for a limited amount of time. Yeah, it was fun to watch you uh, do that. I have some pictures of that as well. 
and uh, you looked a little out of place, but uh, you had fun, you, you, and, and you, you, you basically you helped facilitate some touchdowns, so that was great, and also be a decoy, because when you were in there, everybody thought run for sure, and uh, you know Peyton didn't really like to run the ball much. Um, all right, so we're talking a lot of football, a lot of behind the scenes, and if you look really closely on NFL sidelines, you'll see photographers using think tank bags, and you might not even notice them because they look like regular bags. And that's the best part about Think Tank. Think Tank was created by Kurt Rogers and Deanne, who's a Pulitzer Prize winning photographer. They wanted photographers to have bags that were disguisable so you could walk into buildings and so people wouldn't know you had expensive camera equipment and you could go about your business. They're also very protective for camera equipment. And I'm talking about camera equipment all the way down to the little point and shoots you carry all the way up to the DSLRs that the pros use, and, and now they've got a line of video equipment, uh, video bags that are second to none. This stuff is unbelievable. They started with their Urban Disguise line, and I have, I have to say they're just unbelievable. It, it's all we use here. I personally carry the uh, Shapeshifter every day and love it. Uh, I like the Perspective series, and I love all the bags. My first was the Urban Disguise 60, and we've got a rack full of bags, and you've got to check out Think Tank Photo, especially if you're looking for a bag for your new drone, or if you're looking for a bag for your entire fleet of drones for drone racing, thinktankphoto.com, thinktankphoto.com. you got to check it out. We don't use any other bag here. That is the only bag, and it's unbelievable. It protects the equipment so well. You can put the stuff on planes, and they've got a line of accessories and bags that are second to none. Their customer service is great. I love them. I use them. And you got to check out some interviews I've done with Kurt on beterrific.com. We're talking with Daryl Reed. NFL star, Super Bowl champion, Denver Broncos, Indianapolis Colts. This question's from Janny watching in Finland. What's up, Jenny? He wants to know if you had a favorite team to play against that you got super amped for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I did I did have a favorite team to play against. Um, I, I'll say two teams. I used to make the most plays against the Tennessee Titans for whatever reason. The Titans games, I always used to I used to always make more plays in those games. For some reason, I have game balls from, from playing against the Titans. Um, the most game balls I have is against that team. But the team that I personally, like, despised, so I always got up for, is the San Diego Chargers. Oh, man. that, And even if you looked at the game yesterday, or, or if you looked at the, the, the Broncos-Chargers game. Yeah. And you saw how Philip Rivers is talking trash and complaining to the refs the whole game. It's just like, oh, just, you know, it's annoying. Well, uh, I know you talked a lot of smack to Philip Rivers. Uh, certainly, there are a lot of pictures of you and Philip going at it and, and jarring at each other. Anything you can yeah. share with us that you would say to him after uh, sacking him? Nah, nah, nothing, nothing that's for, uh, you know. I, I, I play hockey, you know that, and, and I talk a lot. I, I, I chirp a lot. And so uh, last night I played, uh, and I had a lot of fun. Two goals, hockey, two, two assists. Hockey. I got, played ice hockey? Yeah, I did. I, I played ice hockey. I got pulled down on a breakaway. I was about to, you know, take off, and I got pulled down, no call. Uh, anyway, I said to the ref, I said, I got to know something. Did you see that and decide it wasn't a penalty or did you miss it completely? And he goes, oh, I saw it. I just, I just didn't call it. And, I, and my whole team, it was, I was on the bench at that point. My whole team was like, what? I mean, everybody saw this trip. And uh, <laughs> he goes, I, I should have called it. I was like, yeah, you think? I was gone. I mean, I, basically, I got to pass it at the blue line and I turned to go and I had two steps and some guy tripped me but there was nobody between and it was a good trip because whatever but what I was going to say is I'm always chirping I scored my first goal last night no so the goalie made a save before I scored a goal and I said oh that was a nice save I'm coming right back at you and then I, I scored on him and I said I told you I'm going to come all night you know and I, I just talk 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 I just want to get under their skin is that what it's about for you or was there something behind it more than that no, um, I, I don't know. I've always been a, you know, a, a trash talker my, my entire career. I love it. My high school days. So that's, that's just part of, part of my game. And it's always been part of my game. And, um, I, you know what, it's, it's kind of like, a, a I guess like a, a boxer where, you, you know, you're, um, you're in this mental state of mind where you, you can't be stopped or you can't be beat. Yeah. So that, 
that goes into that, you know. Well, it also it helps you get amped up, I think. Um, so you talked about the Broncos Chargers game yesterday. Wade Phillips probably uh, took the biggest hit in the game. He is the uh, yeah. defensive coordinator for the Broncos, and, and he's doing well, which is great. That was a, a scary and sad moment. You know, a lot of people stand on the sidelines that need to be on the sidelines during football games, and unfortunately sometimes uh, it ends disastrously. Certainly a non-intentional situation, uh, it seemed like. Um, what about the games yesterday? I mean, the Broncos just looked so good, um, and yet so do the Patriots, which I don't think anybody doubted, especially with Tom Brady. I mean, they were able to do so well without Brady, losing only one game, and then he comes back and knew he'd have a, a come back with a vengeance. What do you think of, of the Broncos, and then what do you think of the Patriots? Well, the Broncos, I mean, they, they're obviously, um, you know, being led by their defense. Their defense is playing lights out, and, uh, you know, Vaughn and uh, Aqib Tlaib got hurt, but, um, you know, they, they, they have guys that always step up and, and play well on, on the defensive side of the ball, and then you know, they're, they're pretty consistent on offense, so it makes them tough to beat. Um, I mean, you look at the Patriots, and you just wonder, how does Gronkowski get so wide open sometimes? Like, this, I mean, have we not seen him score enough touchdowns over the last five years to, for him to be double covered in, like, almost the whole game? I mean, how many weapons does Brady have? Well, you watch the film, and he's always ending up wide open. I never get it. Uh, 69 touchdowns now, and he is uh, big. I mean, does that have anything to do with it? First of all, you're a, you're a big dude. You're a linebacker. Would you have been you, you would have been playing linebacker against him at this point? I guess uh, your linebacker defensive end. Would you have been assigned to cover him? And then you can't put a safety now, on him or a corner. You, you see, the problem is you have to have a safety on him because of is his that, speed. That, because of his speed, you have to have a safety or a corner on him. And then he, like you said, he's bigger than them, so he has that advantage. But no, there's very few linebackers that can run and cover um, Gronkowski because that's not what they're used to doing. But that's what I'm saying. And and the, and to have that speed to keep up with him all game is crazy. And then you have a safety or a corner. I don't think there's a safety DB or corner in the league that really can size up against him. So he's so much bigger. I mean, what what would you do with Darrell Revis against him? And and I think obviously Darrell's a shadow of what he once was, but still, uh, you put any of the guys, uh, put some of the the Broncos on him. I I think Von Miller gives you the best chance against Gronkowski. He's just so big, and he's so he's really like he's a combination of brawn and this like he's almost he reminds me of a ballerina. He he has this like ballerina esque to him. Yet he's I mean get out of his way because he's coming. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you and you know what you you just you, you look at the Patriots and now they got uh, Martellus Bennett is the other tight end and you're like how does the Patriots always get you know the guys that fit their system perfectly like it was like when they got Randy Moss it's like how do they let the Patriots get these players like but they they do a great job of yeah. um, you know finding the right fits fit for their system I mean look at how well Julian Edelman is playing up there and and fits into that system. It's amazing. I, I think that they find guys through scouting, through Belichick, that fit the system well, that are good in the locker room together, but I think that they also, they really, I think Belichick adjusts to make other people fit, and you can look at it by the different quarterbacks they've gone through this season for, you know, Brady being out, and uh, when Matt Castle had to step in for Brady. Uh, and, and by the way, not necessarily dissimilar than what's happening in Denver. Denver has an amazing defense, and let's just get somebody who's serviceable in there, adjust to them a little bit as a quarterback, and let them make some plays, uh, and, and, and then we can be a good team and a force to be reckoned with. There's so much football to talk about, D. You and I could talk about it all day long, every day. Maybe next week we should do a full football segment. We should have you back on, and we should talk about the week's games. Uh, I'll, before I, I let you go, and I know you got to run, I, I want you to tell us all about Vivri, which I know that you're working hard. You've got the Foots Foundation. You're going to be doing a, an amazing event uh, for Waxman as well. That's a cancer research fund uh, that uh, raises about $5 million a year at their annual uh, um, foundation gala. That's going to be November 10th. You're donating your services for personal training for a day, and it's going to be uh, this is going to be available on CharityBuzz.com, on CharityBuzz, so everybody can participate. And the thing is, what you're doing is you're going to give somebody a training session when they pay for this auction item, and you're going to sign some autographs and eat lunch with them. But the training session is going to be as if they were preparing for the NFL. So they will get to see what it's like to prepare 
to play in the NFL. You'll walk them through, actually push them through all these different things. And it, it's going to be a real eye opener, but a lot of fun. And, and you light up the room. So that's awesome. But uh, tell me about Vivery because uh, that's uh, your latest business interest. And it's really a remarkable product. No, Vivri is uh, incredible, and um, it's a uh, it's a new nutritional system, all natural, you know, non-GMO, no hormones, uh, no toxins. Um, it's low glycemic, it's diabetic friendly, but it's a new nutritional system to give our bodies all the vitamins and minerals and protein and micro and macronutrients that our body needs to run efficiently. And um, a lot of the health issues, a lot of people don't know, but a lot of the health issues that face um you know the u.s population come from our diet and things that we eat and things that um that are in our our foods that we don't need or, or we don't digest properly um and also not getting the proper nutrition that we need from our from our current food supply so vv created this nutritional system to give us all those things that our body needs and in doing so it helps combat and um counteract a lot of the health issues facing uh, the U.S. population. Meal replacement um, and supplements, and it's really good stuff. It tastes really good, and it works really well. We've all used it here. We like it. Kevin, Adam, myself, and everybody in the Be Terrific family, it's really awesome. How do people find out more? Um, you can find out more at vivri.com backslash vivri leaders. Um, on social media, at vivri leaders, Facebook, at vivri leaders. Um, or, you know, if you, you can always contact me at Daryl Reed on social media, um, vivriusa at gmail.com if you you know you want to shoot over an email. Excellent. Love it, D. I can't wait to have you on again soon. Before I let you go, real quick, the two teams that you think are going to emerge in, in the NFL this year from the, NF, uh, from the NFC and the AFC. Uh, okay. I, I got something for you after that, too. So I like, um, I like the Cowboys and I, I, like, I like the Broncos. The Cowboys um, are doing yeah. unbelievable. Dak Prescott, I, whoever would have thought. I, they can't put Romo in there, can they? They, hey, they have hey, to not. Mike, do you remember when we talked, last time we talked and we did, we did an interview, before the season, I told you what the Cowboys um, season rested on. You kept talking about Romo, and what did I say? You said Dak you, Prescott. No, 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 no. I said if Ezekiel Elliott stays healthy. You did say that. I remember this now, yes. It's all about Ezekiel Elliott and the Cowboys having a running game again, and that's what's taking a lot of pressure off of Dak Prescott. Don't get me wrong. He's played unbelievable, lights out um, as, as a rookie, but, you know, having that running game has definitely taken that, that some pressure off of him. Awesome. And what was the other thing you were going to say? You were going to say one last thing. I, I was going to ask you who you have for the World Series. Ooh, I, I'm rooting for the Indians because I love the movie Major League growing up, and I just want to say... Willie Hayes, Ricky Vaughn, who the hell are these guys? I, I, so I'm rooting for the Indians. I went as Rick Vaughn for Halloween one year as a kid. It's Halloween today, uh, so I got to be an Indians fan on this one, although I wouldn't mind seeing the Cubbies win, and man, that Chapman is amazing. That was unbelievable yeah. last night. A closer yeah, to go two and two-thirds innings, 101 miles an hour in the, in the ninth. Unreal. But I, I got to yeah. pull for the Indians. And I, I kind of, there's part of me that likes seeing the Cubs fan suffer as a Mets fan. You know, <laughs> I, you know, Bartman, I can't let you off the hook yet. D. Reed, you're the best. I love you, buddy. I can't wait to have you on again soon. N let's set it up for next week. At, uh, at D. Reed, is that what it is? I don't even know. I'm, I'm sorry. At, at, at Daryl Reed, at, at Vivri Leaders. At Vivri Leaders, at Daryl Reed, and of course, at Be Terrific. You are the Terrifics. We'll be back tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern time. And every day, it's the Michael Arts' show. We'll see you again next time. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Be terrific.